Hello, Miles here. Welcome to Abundance Fountain. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you the five step process to the beginner's guide to abundance by Melody Larson. We'll be going through each step one at a time. And here we go. Step one, asking. In order to start this process with step one, you have to know what it is that you truly want to have. You must figure out who you truly desire to be. You must decide what it is you wish to do with this precious life of yours. All options are now open to you. Every single possibility. The whole world is your catalog. If this idea overwhelms you rather than exhilarates you, then the activities in Chapter 1 will help. Many people start with a desire for material things, and that's just fine. It's important to have your worldly needs taken care of so that you are able to do what you love and live as you want to be. Know, however, that materialism on its own is meaningless and will not bring fulfillment without some internal grounding. The law of attraction works best when you focus on what you love, on what you are good at, and on how you can combine those two things to be of service to the world. So I suggest that you focus your desires not only on money and possessions, but also on your health, on your relationships, on personal fulfillment, and on giving back to others. I'm not suggesting you become a Mother Teresa. When you know who you truly are, when you do what you truly love to do, when you are in balance, you will be serving the world in your unique way. Then all the material things will line up effortlessly. Moreover, your life will be abundant in every sense of the word, not just materially speaking. Once you are clear on your desires, be they material, emotional, physical, or spiritual in nature, you must then focus on those desires on a consistent basis. While doing so, you must avoid sending the universe mixed messages by being sure you aren't focusing on what you don't want. You have to only focus consistently on what you do want. It is this repeated focus that eventually creates a shift in consciousness. For example, don't focus on getting out of debt. Focus instead on being financially well off. If you try thinking of getting out of debt, you just end up worrying about the debt and, that's right, you attract even more debt. But if you think about all the wonderful ways your life will be enhanced as a financially well-off person, really seeing those pictures clearly in your mind, you will shift your old debt consciousness to a new wealth consciousness, and then you will attract more money. You can literally shape your reality just by consistently focusing on what you want, bringing your desires into physical form. But you must first clear out those mischievous little emotional bandits whose sole existence is to rob you of your efforts. You do this by moving through steps two and three. Step two, being worthy of it. So let's say you are now clear on what you want. The next step is to know on a deep and true level that you are worthy of your desires, every single one of them. You are more than your personality. You are an infinite being playing at being human at this lifetime. Those bandits in your head that tell you otherwise are a product of your ego and it's time to give them the boot. Your past belongs only to your personality and so has nothing to do with who you really are. Moreover, your current conditions are only a manifestation of who you were as a person before now. You can literally wipe the slate clean at this very moment, for who you are from this moment forward determines who you will be and what will be your future. I know this can be a hard concept to grasp, especially for people who have built up a lot of these false beliefs about their so-called limitations. Likewise, people who tend to hold resentments towards others for their accomplishments, possessions, or natural qualities have a very hard time recognizing that they are themselves just as worthy of those things. They are stuck in the old grass is always greener game. I'm here to tell you that abundance is both boundless and borderless. You are worthy of all you desire because you are here on this planet. Your very existence is an instant ticket to the world of infinite supply. Have versus have not is a totally false and extremely limiting belief system. There is only have and have. You need only realize that you are worthy of having. If you are someone who thinks that you don't deserve all that you desire, that the past equals the future, 
or that the grass is always greener on the other side, then you'll benefit hugely from the activities in Chapter 2. Step 3. Erasing Doubt Next, in Step 3, you have to remove feelings of doubt. You have to know with full conviction that what you've asked for will indeed manifest in your life. You have to expect it. We've been given a wonderful tool to make this process easy. Our imagination. As children, we understood how to use our imagination. How sad that as adults we dismiss it as child's play. Imagination is the key to everything. By consistently imagining yourself being, doing, and having all you desire, as if it is already true, it becomes true in your mind. The universe gets your message and responds by saying, Oh, there's a big disconnect here between this person's vision and their reality. I better get to work ASAP on matching those two things up. And so it sets about bringing those desires to you in actuality. Aha! Did you know that this was the whole reason we have imagination? We are equipped with imagination so that we can manifest our desires, just as surely as we are equipped with lungs so that we may breathe. To use your imagination as it was originally intended, you repeatedly focus your attention on a specific vision in order to achieve specific results. Think about Olympic athletes who visualize their performance over and over before they actually do it. Thoughts literally shape the physical world. Cause and effect are everything. This is how the law of attraction works. If you don't believe me, I suggest you check out what's happening these days in quantum physics. The so-called new science is proving it to be true. Step three is absolutely critical. So let's look at a common example. Let's say you want to lose weight. If you keep getting on the scale every day and focusing on the unhappy number you don't want to see, if you keep grabbing at your flab and obsessing about it, if you keep staring at your current self in the mirror, full of self-loathing and disgust and hopelessness, then you are repeatedly focusing on that as your reality. And so, that is exactly the reality that you continue to experience. More of the same, more overweight. But if you instead taped a new smaller number on the scale and looked at that number whenever you got on the scale, if you spent 10 minutes every day visualizing yourself being and feeling slimmer and acting like a healthy person acts, getting yourself all revved up on positive emotions, then that is what you would get instead. Your repeated thoughts would literally begin to change your body. Your habits would improve effortlessly and you would start to lose weight and eventually achieve a matchup to your visions. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. It's a 100% guarantee. Just as it is a 100% guarantee that as long as you focus on your fat, you will stay fat. I've hinted that another key part of step three is staying emotionally connected with what you desire. While you are mentally visualizing a desire as if it is already true for you, you must also get into feeling what it's like to have that desire. This is essential. When you have positive feelings, you send out a high energy vibration to the universe, like one of those giant spotlights that department stores shine into the sky to attract customers to a special event. The universe will respond faster to your emotions than to just thoughts alone. A final word on step three. Your job is to focus only on what you want and why you want it. That is all you have to do. It is the universe's job to figure out the who, when, where, and how. It always knows the fastest, easiest, and most appropriate way. It is in the details beyond the what and the why that we get stuck, get doubtful, and therefore get nothing. So do your job. Figure out what you want and why you want it. Then relax and let the universe do its job. I have found that step three is often the most difficult for many. We start off all fired up and excited, but over time we lose our momentum and ability to keep our visions and emotions sustained. When this happens, we slip back into step two again as we wrestle with our doubt, feelings of unworthiness, and lack of hope. That is why I have included so many activities in chapter three that are centered on this crucial step. Step four, feeling good. Now we have come to step four. Like step three, step four is about emotions, particularly the emotion of gratitude. The universe is expansive, abundant, and joyful. It doesn't understand or respond to lack of negativity. 
It is amazing how often we focus on things we don't have while taking for granted all that we do have. If you are a glass half-empty person, the activities in Chapter 4 will be extremely beneficial to you. You must learn to live in a state of joy and gratitude. It's so important to feel good. Like attracts like. By having feelings that are joyful and grateful, you will attract even more things to be joyful and grateful about. You must be grateful not only for what you have in your life already, but for all that you have in your visualized life as well, because it is yours already. You are only waiting for it to manifest into physical form. Remember the garden hose? Positive thoughts and emotions keep the hose unkinked. The universe loves to be thanked. It will respond to your appreciation with greater and greater abundance. All you desire will come faster than you could ever imagine. Step 5. Action. Finally, step 5. Step 5 is about action. You can't just sit and wait for all you desire to magically appear. Visualization is like a magnet, pulling your desires closer to you. But if you don't reach out and grab the stuff, the stuff will pass you by. Some things may literally land in your lap without any more effort than visualization, but to get most things, it'll require some action on your part. Note that by action I don't mean effort. It's more about understanding that what you desire may manifest in unexpected ways. You need to be open to and act on opportunities that show up. Remember that the how is not up to you to decide. Action, quite often, will be about not dismissing an intuitive nudge when you get one. When you have one of those little flash bulbs of brilliance go off, don't dismiss it. Don't tell yourself it's a ridiculous idea. Act on it without delay. Make it real before your emotional bandits destroy it. If I had let my bandits talk me out of writing this book, you wouldn't be benefiting from it right now. You have to learn to recognize when an opportunity that will lead you to your desire is present in your life. The universe speaks in whispers rather than in trumpet blasts. You have to develop your intuition and pay attention to the clues the universe is leaving for you. The last chapter in this book has activities designed to help you improve your intuition. Don't underestimate the power of developing it. Your intuition is how your higher self delivers the universe's messages to you. Without it, you may miss the opportunity to transform your visualizations into reality. Okay, again, a big thank you to Melody Larson for the five-step process in the Beginner's Guide to Abundance. If you'd like to purchase the entire book, you'll find a link in the description below. You can get to Amazon and purchase that book, and Melody will give you a bunch more activities and uh, loads of more information uh, on the Beginner's Guide to Abundance. I also produced an accompanying video uh, to this. that You can find the link to that. Uh, in the description below as well. And also just another reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, I hope you're finding some value here and you do subscribe, hit the notification button so you'll get an alert for the next videos that I do publish. Uh, really looking forward to seeing you here and being of service to you on your pathway to your abundance. Until next time, take good, good care.